The Old Testament reading for Ash Wednesday is from Joel chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. The text for this evening is taken from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, and it's based on the Ten Commandments, uh, the hymn that we just uh, sung and confessed, and also, as we will now together recite the Ten Commandments with their meaning as well that comes from Exodus 20. Please turn to page 321, recite the Ten Commandments together. Please note the italicized questions that I will ask those questions and you uh, will read together the response along with each commandment. Begin with the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray praise and give thanks. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities.
but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. You shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. You shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or get it in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals, or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duty. And the close of the commandments. What does God say about all these commandments? He says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. What does this mean? God threatens to punish all who break these commandments. Therefore, we should fear his wrath and not do anything against them. But he promises grace and every blessing to all who keep these commandments. Therefore, we should also love and trust in him and gladly do what he commands. Luther wrote the catechisms because he was appalled that so many so-called Christians didn't even know the basics of God's word. They didn't know the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed by heart. He wrote the small catechism to change that because he loved the people. The Apostle Paul writes about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Love is something that everyone yearns for, everyone wants, everyone desires to be loved. But let's start our Lenten journey in a place that that we may not think about when it comes to love. Love and the Ten Commandments. They may seem like they are completely polar opposites, like oil and water, which don't mix. Ten Commandments are law, not love. Where is the love in the Ten Commandments? It's all about demands. It's all about what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So where is the love? Well, who better to know about love and to tell us about love in the Ten Commandments than Jesus himself? Jesus talks a lot about the Ten Commandments in the Gospels. In Matthew chapter 22, He speaks these words, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
on these two commandments depend all of the law and the prophets. So Jesus instructs us to love. Love God. Love your neighbor. The fulfillment is there in Jesus also in those Ten Commandments. If you love God, you will have no other God that you trust, that you trust in or rely upon in your lives than our Creator God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one who has, yes, made heaven and earth and all things. If you love God, you will not take his name in vain. You will not curse or swear by his name, you satanic arts. If you love God, you will remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, and you will worship in the house of the Lord faithfully and hear his word preached. If you love God, in all of these first three commandments, the first table of the law, you will love him with your whole heart, soul, in mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself in the last seven commandments, the second table of the law. If you love God, you will love all whom God puts in your life, including your parents and others in authority like teachers, government leaders, as long as they don't tell us to sin against God and his word. If you love your neighbor, you will desire not to hurt them or harm them or even get angry with them and yell at them. If you love your neighbor, you will not take from them. You will not take from others what is not yours. You will not steal. If you love your neighbor, you won't gossip about them or tell lies or give them a bad reputation. If you love your neighbor, you won't desire things, covet what isn't yours, but you will be content with what you have. Love. There it is, defined by Jesus. So, are we all good? What's the problem? All the ifs. If you do this, if you love in this way or that way, have you? Have you done it? Luther's large catechism reveals that we haven't. He writes these words, Many a person thinks that he has God and everything in abundance when he has money and possessions. He trusts in them and he boasts about them with such firmness and assurance as to care for no one, to love no one. Mammon, money, and possessions is the most common idol the most common of our loves here on earth. So he goes on to say, he who has money and possessions feels secure, feels like everything's okay, and is joyful and undismayed as though we were sitting in the midst of paradise. The Ten Commandments then show us how love isn't as it should be when we replace true love with our own ways and not God's ways. God then gets pushed aside, gets left behind. We focus on another God, another love, in our life. This Ash Wednesday, we are then reminded with the Ten Commandments before us that there is a big problem with our failure to listen. If we fail to listen, we fail then to fear, love, and trust in God 
above all things. And so we have ashes on our foreheads, confessing we are terrible listeners, just like Adam and Eve, just like Jonah, who didn't listen to God and go to Nineveh as he was told. He goes his own way. And so do we. And just like many others as well in the Bible. And because we fail to listen, we fail to love, and there are consequences. You will die. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Where's the love? Is there an answer? Return to the Lord your God, says Joel in our Old Testament lesson. Return to me with all your heart, says God, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and tear out your hearts, rend your hearts, and not your garments. More law, not love. How can we return to the Lord? Because we have a merciful and loving God who invites us into his very presence. Invites us here tonight into his very presence so that we can return to him once again to turn to the loving one. Where's the love? Here, for you, tonight. Our epistle lesson says it so beautifully from 2 Corinthians 5. For our sake he, that is God, made him, made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin. He was the perfect human being. He knew no sin, but he took on our sin. He became sin, that in him, in Jesus, then we might become what? The righteousness of God. Where's the love? While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Where's the love? God loved you even as a sinner that he sent Jesus into this world, born of a woman, born under the law born under the law to redeem those who are under the law, you and me, so that we might, so that we might receive adoption. Adopted as his sons and daughters, becoming a member of his family. That's how much he loves you. The love is in Jesus, who gave the Ten Commandments when we certainly couldn't keep them and he kept them perfectly. He is perfect love as he took on the punishment we deserved. And so as we begin our Lenten journey, we turn back by God's grace to the Lord we return to him. We return to the loving one who forgives us. We keep the Ten Commandments in our lives in Christ Jesus. We keep them in our lives to to give thanks for God's gracious mercy so we can live in them daily, resisting then the temptation of the devil to fall into those sins as the Holy Spirit leads us to pray, praise, and give thanks as we desire to live in our baptism, to fear, love, and trust in God above all things, to love our neighbor as ourselves. In the name of Jesus, amen. We pray that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, would keep our hearts and minds always 
in Christ Jesus.